Good morning, Concordia. Got a few things. The bulletin's chock full of information. Be sure to read it. But a couple of things bring to your attention. Main Street Mission. They're seeing a lot more need today than they've seen in the past. So keep them in mind. If you have some things you can donate, please do. And I'm going to go out on the here. I guess they could bring them to church and put them somewhere and we could take them down if you need to. But keep them in mind. Um, vacation Bible School starts July the 14th. Six o'clock, be there. I bet you'll have fun. Um, due to July the 4th changes and Bible school coming up, the women's circle have some changes. Be sure to check your bulletin for what time your circle is going to be meeting and whether you're going to be in charge or not. Um, one more announcement that I have for you. There's a congregational meeting coming up. And I can't find the date of it. Very front. Very front. July the 21st, 945. It'll be in the Family Life Center. And it'll be voting on the youth building repairs. Um, keep that in mind. See if you have any questions. If you have, I'm sure they've already been answered. But if you have them, I'm sure we can answer them again. Uh, you can ask them that day. You can ask Omar or any of us any time before that day. But keep that voting time in mind. And Pastor. Hey, Jerry. Good morning, and the Lord be with you. It's great to have everyone here. I uh, um, was wondering if we were going to have to have boat parking outside with all of the rain that we've had, but uh, uh, it's a blessing, and we'll take it whenever we can. Uh, just a couple of things to add to that. Uh, one worship note this morning that. Uh, our children's sermon is going to take place at a slightly different uh, place in the worship. We're going to do the children's sermon immediately before the, uh, the reading of the gospel. Those two things uh, are going to go together. Uh, so just pay attention to that and I'll ask the children to come up and then we will go into our gospel. Ask you to, uh, to please lift up all of those uh, in our prayer concerns. Uh, one we want to uh, remember as well as Jim Howell. Jim Howell is now at the uh, Standback Rehab Center at Rowan uh, Regional Hospital, is doing well, uh, is making good progress, and uh, he asked me yesterday when I visited with him to uh, make sure that you knew how grateful uh, he was for those prayers. He said that that was something that he could, he could truly feel as well. Also, it found out that uh, Carolyn McLaughlin is, uh, has a new addition to her family, a, a great-grandson, Great grandson, so congratulations to you, Carolyn. That is a wonderful thing. Uh, any other announcements before we begin? And we'll be talking about Vacation Bible School a little bit later in the service as well. If not, welcome to everyone, to our visitors. Let's make our hearts ready for worship. <laughs>
This summer, as a part of our liturgy in July and August, we will be going to a liturgy that is called Responsive Prayer. So let us stand and begin our worship together. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. are new each morning, and God's purposeful presence is found in every season. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, we read responsibly from Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious, say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Here ends the reading of the psalm. The New Testament reading is from Galatians, the sixth chapter. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like for all of our children to come down and to join me for our children's message. about how many of you have been to um, a party since summer's gotten out? How many of you have been to a party lately? Just a couple of you? Oh, surely you've been to some parties this summer. We have gotten, you've been to one too? What kind of party did you go to? It was your party. That's the best kind. That is the absolute best kind. What about you, Mary Catherine? A birthday party? Anybody? Tell me about you, Jake. Birthday party, yeah. Uh, I borrowed uh, I borrowed a balloon uh, from a party that I went to recently, and uh, every time I see a balloon, it makes me think of a party or a celebration. And there have been birthday parties, graduation parties. There have been all kinds of invitations coming in the mail, um, and and this is just an exciting time of year when we do that. So um, let's see. We hold the balloon for me for just a minute. All right. I want to show you. Uh, a different kind of invitation. This is an invitation similar to a birthday party or, or any type of a, a pool party that you might have. And hopefully these were handed out to you as you came in this morning. And what I have here is an invitation for Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School doesn't, it doesn't start today. It starts next Sunday evening. 
And we're going to come together here at the church in the Family Life Center. And we're going to have a party all week long. And it's not just for, for you, our younger members, but it's for our grown-ups. It's for everyone. And I need your help. Will you guys help me with something? All right. Let me help hand a couple of these out here. All right. Okay. I'm going to give you your sister since she's got the balloon. Okay? All right. I want to hand a couple of these out. And I'm going to tell you what we can, how we can use these, uh, these invitations. Can you give them to your brother? There you go, guys. Get you two. All right. Okay, here we go. And one over here. Good. All right, so we have plenty of invitations. Here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to keep this invitation. Because since you're here, you're already invited to Vacation Bible School. What I want you to do is take this invitation and I want you to give it to a friend. Can you do that for me? Because here in just a few minutes during the sermon, I'm going to challenge the congregation to do the very same thing. So what I would like for you to do is to take this invitation, give it to a friend, and ask them and invite them to come to Vacation Bible School. Because there's nowhere else unless we are in worship that we get to hear the great news of God's love. And the great news of God's love comes to us through Scripture. And in Vacation Bible School, it's going to come to us in songs. We're going to have all kinds of ways that we can proclaim Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And I need your help in getting that word out. And you're going to hear in our reading in just a moment that Jesus used 72 people to give out that invitation. And we're going to do the way Jesus asked us to in our reading, okay? Will you give out these invitations for me? You do that? All right, great. Fold your hands with me and let us pray together. Holy God, your son Jesus called many, many people to him. And then he sent them out. He sent them out, O oh Lord, that they might invite people into your arms and into your love and faith. Be with our young people here this morning. Give them strength and courage to send out that invitation to where all people might know of your incredible love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up very much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. summer, our lectionary is providing all of our gospel readings from the Gospel of Luke. And this morning we hear a story that, that doesn't come up a lot in our readings, but it's one that's, that's very powerful and it's difficult for us to ignore. We hear how Jesus will appoint 72 people. Might sound like a random number, but 72 people, and sends them out two by two to proclaim the word of Jesus Christ. Listen to what Jesus does, how he responds, and to those specific instructions he gives them. And these are also instructions for us as well. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, Jesus said, I am sending you out like lambs among the wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. But when you enter a house, first say, 
peace to this house. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house, but when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would, have been, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted into the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me, Jesus says. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, and I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in the heavens. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I know this is a busy time of year, and it's probably not a good season to watch television. All of the really good TV shows usually don't start until the fall, because in the summer, folks are outside doing outside activities. But there's a particular movie that when it comes on, if I'm able to, I'll stop everything. Now, it's an older movie. It was, it was uh, made uh, probably about 16, 17 years before I was born. It's a movie called High Noon, and if you love westerns, or even if you don't like westerns, I think you would like this movie. Uh, it's your typical western fare type of movie. It's slow moving, dialogue is rather slow. If you're looking for uh, a, a big summer action adventure, you're probably not gonna find it in a western. But in this particular movie, Gary Cooper, and I believe it was around 1950 when this movie was made, Gary Cooper is the sheriff of the small town, and it all takes place within just a couple hours. In the midst of this small town, Gary Cooper and the town are on edge because at 12 noon, at high noon coming into town on the train, is one of the fiercest enemies and lawbreakers that there has ever been. And he's coming on the train at 12 noon to meet three of his friends, and they're going after the sheriff, and they're going to take him down. So the idea is, is that the sheriff goes around all day long, all morning long. The sheriff goes around all morning long, and he's trying to get deputies. He's trying to deputize people who will help him fight this enemy. And he needs deputies because the three he had have bailed out on him. And he goes from house to house, from business to business. No one, no one will take up his offer to be a deputy to help him defend himself in the town. No one. Well, I thought about that movie this past week, and as we were looking at our scripture reading just a few moments ago, we see that Jesus had far more success than Gary Cooper in the movie High Noon, where no one, no one would take up Gary Cooper's offer to be deputized and to carry a gun and fight for honor in the city. Jesus, on the other hand, got 72 people, 72 
And it's an odd number. The only thing we know about that number is that sometimes it's translated uh, from the original uh, language. Sometimes it's translated to mean 70 or 72. But the important part is Jesus recruited, he appointed, he gave them what the game plan was, and he sent them out. 72 of them. Now, I think it's fascinating Jesus went into great detail. Jesus did not say, go out, tell them that the kingdom of God is near, and let's just see what happens. No. Jesus went out and he said, here's what you do. He said, you do three things. Number one, he said, you offer, you bring peace and you offer it to that family. Number two, heal the sick. And number three, tell them that the kingdom of God is near. Those are the only three instructions. But then he came back and he said, if they do not listen, let the peace return back to you. Shake the dust off your sandals. And that's just a great visual image, isn't it? Shake the dust off your sandals and move on your way and do not even look back. I can't imagine what that meeting of disciples must have been like later as they all gathered around the campfire and began sharing their successes and their bright spots, and then how that may not have worked out very well. But it's the invitation. Jesus shared that invitation. He extended that invitation to others through the 72. And that's the theme this morning that we hear in this gospel, is extending the invitation. We are not a congregation. We are not a congregation whose doors... Uh, remain locked during the times when we gather. We are not a congregation that checks IDs, uh, IDs, IDs at the door. But we are a congregation that welcomes. And I had a great question asked of me a couple of weeks ago. In fact, I put something in the bulletin about it about a month and a half ago, and I've had this question a great deal. Uh, and that is, our official name, Concordia's official name is Concordia Evangelical Lutheran Church. And folks said, you know, that name evangelical, you know, is that a part of a denomination that we used to be a part of? Do we really need that in there? And my answer is yes. Evangelical describes who we are as God's people. To be evangelical means that we should be in constant motion of welcoming and inviting others in. That is our goal. That is what God calls us to do. That is is what we have been ordained to do in our holy in our baptisms is call other people in and invite other people in because where else where else will they hear about the forgiveness of sins culture's not going to tell us that right where else are they going to hear the good news in the midst of bad news that God's kingdom is coming near when all things will be made new Culture's not going to tell us that. Where is it that we can offer prayer and hope and healing in the midst of difficulty? <coughs> Culture's not going to do that for us. So we invite and we welcome people. And not only do we invite and welcome people, but once they come, we make them feel even more welcome. And we extend that invitation to come closer and to really be involved. Uh, this morning, as I just gave to our children uh, in our children's sermon, uh, we have one of these, and hopefully everyone got one. If not, there's some at the back tables as you, as you leave. This is an invitation, and it's not for you. You are invited to Vacation Bible School by virtue of being here. One of the invitations, hopefully you were given one of these. This is an invitation to Vacation Bible School. It's not something that we're going to leave on windshield. Uh, of a car in the mall. It's not something that we're going to stick on the door. This is something I want each of you to take and to physically hand to someone with a spoken invitation. With a spoken invitation for to come to Concordia. Um, Vacation Bible School is coming up. It starts a week from tonight. And it is quite simply one of the easiest things that we can invite someone to do. I mean, when you come up to folks and say, we're going to provide supper for you for five nights, I mean, what's a better deal than that, right? And it just so happens, supporting all of that, 
is the word of God that we will study, we will pray, we will celebrate, we'll learn through arts and crafts, through music. There's going to be so much involved. But it begins with an invitation. We do all of these things and, and we declare ourselves to be evangelical, but we don't invite people in. We're winking in the dark. We're going through the motions where no one could know what was going on. And that's not what God calls us to do. God calls us to simply be inviting every day, every moment. And one of the great things about that invitation is with that invitation comes relationship. Now, it would be kind of fun, uh, just for the fun's sake of it, taking these and kind of dropping them. You know, that would have been a great idea, wouldn't it, to... Uh, get a whole lot of these and kind of drop them from an airplane over the Faith Fourth Parade. You know, that would be great. Uh, part of me thinks that would actually be a lot of fun. But there is no substitute when it comes to bringing others to Christ. There is no substitute for relationship. And I want you to hear that again. There is no substitute in terms of bringing people to Jesus Christ. There is no substitute for relationship. Uh, back when I was in seminary, in, uh, in one of my Old Testament classes, this was an initial overview before we started uh, getting into some more details. Um, our professor asked us to, to write kind of a reflection paper. And he said, if you, could, if, you could, um, if you could come up with a theology of the Old Testament, what would that be? And, you know, there's theology of family, theology of... Uh, uh, theology of family, theology of promise, theology of love. There's all kinds of theologies you could come up with through the Old Testament. Uh, the one I wrote on was the theology of relationship. And if you look all the way through the Old Testament, all of the Old Testament characters, their, their connection with God was not God would send a message, he'd wait for the message to be delivered, and then... The person would receive it, the person would respond and send it back in the mail. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like sending an email or a text or leaving a, leaving a voicemail and then letting your voicemails respond back and forth to each other. Every time, every time in the Old Testament that God had a response, that God needed to reach out, it was face to face. It was person to person. It was about relationship. Because that's where the credibility was. And it's the same way with us as God's people is that when we invite others in to this incredible thing that's going on here, that is the sharing of God's love, when we invite folks, we follow up with it. We say, hey, tell you what, not only am I going to invite you to Bible school, I'm going to come pick you up. Or I'm going to meet you at a certain place and we'll sit together. It's that follow-up relationship because that's, that's where the power of God's love is. It's not a one-time, one-off thing. It's not like a movie that shows one time in a theater and then it's gone. It's an ongoing relationship. And see, Jesus makes that happen today. Jesus makes that happen today in our gospel when he says to the 72, I've appointed you, you're ready to go, I'm going to send you out. He says, bring peace to the house. He says, bring healing where it is needed and tell them that the kingdom of God is really, really nearby. And it's coming soon. In fact, it's closer today than it was yesterday. <coughs> Proclaim that good news but because they're not going to hear it anywhere else. So I have a challenge for you this morning. And I've shared this with some folks. <clears throat> um, in the last couple of days, but I want to share it publicly. Here's my challenge for you. And I've talked with my family about it, and, um, and I would like for you to do this. For each person in your family, let's say, for example, in my family, there are five of us. We have identified five families that we are going to invite to Vacation Bible School. These are families that are not Concordia families. These are families that may be currently may not have a relationship with the congregation, or they may be seeking a congregation. Five members of our family, we're going to seek out five families and personally, 
personally invite them to vacation Bible school. I want you to do the very same. Again, this is the easiest. It doesn't get any easier than this. If we can't be an evangelical people inviting folks uh, to vacation Bible school, then maybe we've got some work to do. We're going to do this. I'm going to invite each of you and your families to do the very same thing. And I'm going to add a little something extra to it. I sound like an infomercial on TV, on TV, don't I? If you call an order now. No, it's not that. Uh, here's the extra piece. And I'm very serious about this. And, I'll take, and, and I hope you will take me up on it. I'm not going to say if. I'm going to say when you invite a family that's not a part of the Concordia family. When you invite a family, you forward me their phone number. And you get in touch with me. Give them, give them, you give Excuse me. You give me their phone number. I will follow up with a personal phone call that day because I think it's that important. Each of us here invite a family to vacation Bible school because what we are about as God's people proclaiming God's love through Jesus Christ, it's too important, it's too valuable, and it's too good for us not to be proclaiming outside our own family selves. You invite that family. In turn, if you're willing to give me their phone number, I will call them and reaffirm your invitation. And it would tickle me to death if that's all I do this week. Because that's what Jesus is about. It's nothing less than what Jesus is about. He start, it started with Jesus. It started with his disciples. It spreads out to the 72. We find out later in Acts that through the Holy Spirit it spreads out to several thousands. You and I have the people of the New Testament to thank for the fact that we are here and we believe. It's because somebody else told the story to us. And it's because somebody else told the story to those before us that we are here and that we are bathing in the grace that God has given us. So I want you to take me up on that challenge and I hope you will. I hope that you'll take me up on that challenge to invite others to vacation Bible school because people should know, and my strong and sincere hunch is there are people out there that are truly, truly dying to hear what it means to be a part of God's family. There's not a better message we can tell. I can't think of a better place to tell it, nor can I think of a better community of people to share that message in. Jesus said, tell them that the kingdom of God is coming near. When all things will be made new, all things will be wrapped up into his love. That's a good story to tell. Let us pray. Holy God, by the waters of baptism, you have ordained us to go out and tell the story. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, that you, have, that you have stirred your spirit within us. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for those who have told us that story. Parents, grandparents, friends, Sunday school teachers, thank you for the people who have shared with us your love. Lord God, do not let it stop with us. May it continue and flourish tenfold. We look forward to this week leading into Vacation Bible School. And we look forward to the opportunity, not just for us to reaffirm God's love, but for us to reaffirm that love for others. We ask this in Jesus' name.
Let us continue with morning prayer. O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. Let my mouth be full of your praise. And your glory Every day I will bless you. And praise your name forever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O oh God of our salvation. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all you redeem my life from the grave. Lord, hear our prayers. On this day, we pray for the nation of Egypt and the tumult that has resulted in violence the last couple of days. We ask that you would bring peace to that nation, and we pray that you will safeguard the millions of Christians that continue to worship in that area. We pray also for the people of Arizona amidst the wildfires these last two weeks. And our hearts also go out to the families of the 19 firefighters who perished, protecting lives and saving property. We pray for our bishop, John Berdowski, and his staff. We pray for Christian churches seeking to be faithful amid a rapidly changing culture. We pray for Jim Howe as he continues to, to recover and gain strength at Rowan Regional. We ask that you would be with Bob and Judy Curley, the mother of Eddie and Jason Ritchie, as they pull things together and receive assistance after the burning of their house yesterday morning. We pray that you will give them the care that's needed and give them those, those certain comforts that will help them to know that with you, we will always have a home. We pray for our members receiving care at Liberty Commons. Peggy Fulcher and Doris Leeser. And we also ask that you look into our hearts and that you would come to us and address those concerns that weigh heavy upon us. For these things and these people, for the concerns we have spoken and those that remain in our hearts, grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us stand. Let us pray. Generous God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, our time, ourselves, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ Jesus invites you to his holy table, nourished at the feast of the Lamb. Together we are strengthened to proclaim the triumphant love of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
in with the body parts to be free. Probably the body parts to be free. Spread the body parts to be free. Let us stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Together we pray, God of grace, send us forth in peace. Form us into what we celebrate, the body of Christ in the world. Nourished by this sacrament, Give us strength and courage to serve you in daily life with joy and singleness of heart. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Son and Holy Spirit, bless each of you now and forever. Amen. People of God, you have been called to be disciples of Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. We will.
Thanks be to God.